This isn't where I was hoping to break down. This planet seems pretty lacking in scenery, cuddly critters, gourmet pastries, an oxygenated atmosphere. All the things I value, really. While I wait for the crew to fix the spaceship and get me on my way to devouring a galactic scone, let's review the structure of the animal cell membrane. Tell me a better way to pass the time. We'll use this river to represent the cell membrane which you might also hear called the plasma membrane. And that land in front will represent inside the cell, or the intracellular environment, while the far side represents the extracellular environment outside the cell. This fluid river of mosaic space goo represents that the structure of the cell membrane is often referred to as the fluid mosaic model. Fluid comes from the fact that even though cell membranes are semi-solid, their components are constantly moving around, which gives them fluid-like characteristics. How much a membrane's components move around is often described in terms of membrane fluidity, with higher fluidity meaning more movement. The mosaic part of the fluid mosaic is because the cell membrane is composed of a variety of different lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates. Let's start by taking a look at those lipids. These two layers of sunbathing phospholipid aliens represent the phospholipid bilayer, the two-layer barrier that separates inside the cell from outside. Phospholipids are amphipathic molecules, meaning they have both hydrophilic and hydrophobic regions. Their heads are hydrophilic, so they gather in the aqueous environment inside and outside the cell. This leads the hydrophobic tails to form the two layers of the inside of the membrane because they are excluded from the aqueous environment. The next membrane lipid is cholesterol, which also has a hydrophobic and a hydrophilic region. So it interacts with the phospholipids in the bilayer and helps stabilize them. Just like how this cane, shaped like a cholesterol molecule, is stabilizing this phospholipid alien who's just a few centuries past their prime. Cholesterol regulates membrane fluidity by making the cell membrane more fluid at low temperatures and keeping it from becoming overly fluid at high temperatures. It also takes up space between phospholipids, which prevents harmful materials from accumulating in the membrane. And that brings us to the last major category of lipid in the cell membrane, sphingolipids. The cruise ship is called the Sphinx to remind you of sphingolipids. Like phospholipids and cholesterol, they have a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail. The type and quantity of sphingolipids present in a membrane depends on the type of cell, but the details aren't important for now. Other lipids in the bilayer can congregate into structures called lipid rafts, which we represented with this raft that looks like a block of lipidy cheese. Lipid rafts are high in both cholesterol and sphingolipids, which changes their fluidity compared to other areas of the membrane. Because they are slow moving, lipid rafts are an important attachment point for membrane proteins. Next up, this alien doing flips represents flipases, enzymes that use ATP to flip phospholipids from one layer of the cell membrane to the other. Hence why this ET, shredding the gnar, is flinging their phospholipid partner from one side of the river to the other. Phospholipids can easily drift within one layer of the cell membrane, but because it's energetically favorable for their heads to stay near water and their tails to stay away from it, extra energy from flipases is needed to move them between layers. All right, that's it for lipids. Next up, cell membrane proteins, starting with transmembrane proteins. Transmembrane proteins pass through the entire cell membrane, just like this bridge spanning the entire river. These proteins connect the cytosol with the extracellular environment. Most transporters, channels, and receptors are transmembrane proteins. This bed on the riverbank represents embedded proteins, which, as you might have guessed, are embedded into the surface of the plasma membrane. They can either be inside the cell, on the cytoplasmic side, or outside the cell, on the extracellular side of the membrane. Both transmembrane and embedded proteins are referred to as integral proteins because they're built into the plasma membrane. Finally, this sad, empty space cabana on the periphery of the fun represents peripheral proteins, also known as membrane-associated proteins. These are not fully integrated into the inner cell membrane, but also are not free-floating in the cytoplasm. 
Instead, they are bound to the surface of the phospholipid bilayer or to transmembrane proteins. With that, we've made it to our last type of membrane macromolecule, carbs. Carbohydrates are always found on the extracellular side of the cell membrane, just like this tree you'll only find growing on one side of the river. Carbs in the cell membrane are usually attached to proteins or lipids to create glycoproteins and glycolipids. You can remember glyco by the glucose-heavy candy growing on this tree, which does make me hate this planet a little bit less. Finally, someone's signaling for help, which is a great reminder that carbohydrates also play a key role in cell signaling and cell-cell recognition. Cells use the identity of the carbohydrate groups on other cell surfaces to differentiate between cell types and even identify foreign cells. For example, a, B, and O blood types in humans each have different surface carbs. Well, looks like help is on the way, so let's soak up this strange planet one last time. The cell membrane separates the inside of the cell from the extracellular environment. It's often called a fluid mosaic because it's made of many different macromolecules, each of which can move around the membrane in a fluid manner. Phospholipids make up the bilayer of the membrane. Their hydrophobic tails are found inside the membrane while their hydrophilic heads interact with the intracellular and extracellular environments. Flipases are enzymes that use ATP to move phospholipids between layers of the bilayer. Then, cholesterol stabilizes the cell membrane, and the role of sphingolipids varies depending on the cell type. Multiple types of lipids can come together to form complexes called lipid rafts, which are important for molecule attachment and cell signaling. Then there's the proteins. Transmembrane proteins bridge the entire bilayer to connect the intracellular and extracellular environments. Whereas embedded proteins are found on either the intracellular or extracellular side. And finally, peripheral proteins are bound to the surface of the bilayer, but don't interact with the inner membrane. Carbs are always found on the extracellular side of the cell membrane. They're usually bound to proteins or lipids to form glycoproteins or glycolipids. These carbs play an important role in cell-cell recognition. Okay, well, that's the engine revving, so I'm out of here to grab a tasty treat from the neighboring galaxy. You know, I hear they get their recipe from Cleveland. Catch you in the next solar system. <laughs>